Good morning. We'll start. We'll start with the pledge. Excuse me, I gotta find a seat. That'll take a while. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Good morning. Tough crowd already. Thank you, guys. See one. Five board members. Wow, small groups. So the board's here to find out what we actually did with the budget. Bill is stuck out of town. He couldn't get his, uh, his flight back. Otherwise, Bill. Gotcha. I was asked to sit in the front row. Yeah, we said I was the best the hackler row. there is. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right, we're, all right, we're going to go over uh, the, this year's budget. Small crowd. I'm hoping there's some folks outside watching us on, online. Uh, I guess when we leak the information out to the papers that there wasn't going to be a, an increase, all of a sudden uh, people coming to attend drops off. But that must mean we're doing something right. So I'll go through this. There are copies on the back table. I see there are people who already picked them up. Uh, when we, uh, when we start to complain. You can start in about an hour. Okay. We'll be done by then. All right, so I'll go through it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over a, a quick budget overview the process, the key elements, and then the budget components. Uh, then we'll open the floor for questions. Uh, typically, we have you come to the microphone, state your name, be nice. If you're not nice, I don't answer. But we have a small enough crowd here and it's board members, uh, the majority. But I do see some. So the board members aren't allowed. All the residents are allowed to talk first. <laughs> Actually, the board members can't talk at all because it's a court. There you go. We're 90 percent of the meeting. What are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, uh, the budget was built this year. Uh, uh, again, we always look at our vision statement first. Okay, be the premier resort community offering exceptional value and quality of life to property owners who are diverse in age, economic status, and interest. Uh, a lot of times folks will ask why or how we build or why we're thinking the way we do, but we always have to go back to the vision statement. That helps direct our flow and we're thinking about we're adding things, subtracting things, making changes. Budget process. I cleaned up a little. I went to, to great detail. I, I tried to make it a little simpler today to make it uh, a little easier to read. Basically, September, we began talking with the staff. Uh, we talked about needs, wants, and desires, and then we worked through our cap. The staff are given the capital project worksheets. Uh, that was something we implemented last year. It worked out well, so we, we put them back in this year. That's a copy of what the worksheet looks like, but it, what it allows us to do is actually not only capture what they're what they're proposing for capital, it also allows them to put some reasoning and some a little bit of background. That way, when someone looks at it, uh, they have an understanding of the thought that went into why the capital uh, has been requested. Uh, in October, uh, we began receiving the budget requests, and when I say receiving budget requests, they were coming in from the department heads uh, as well as the capital project worksheet. Uh, in November, I received budget guidance from the board. December, we began uh, computations uh, and putting all of the elements together. Uh, we made changes, modified. Uh, we, we were having staff meetings and talking with them about what they needed, what they didn't need. Uh, and then from there, we finalized the budget and we created the binders the very last week. Uh, that, that week between Christmas and uh, and uh, New Year's is a good week. That's where we can really sit down. It's, it's typically quieter around here, and we're able to go through this and, and knock out putting everything together and scrubbing anything we need to. Uh, early January, the budget books are delivered to the Board of Directors and the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, from there, uh, we go into budget uh, overview, and that's where we've given the books out. And then I go and give a brief presentation to the board and the BNF about what's included in the book. Not a whole lot of discussion except what went into it. Uh, and then from there, the meetings began with the budget finance committee. So it's a, I'm lining up the process. Everybody knows it's not a quick, just done, you know, this is a four or five month process to get where we are today. February, BNF uh, did a final report following our meetings. Uh, and, and that were two and a half days of meetings with me and F me. Now, I will take a second to say this was probably of the four years, this was the best one we had so far. It went the smoothest. There was great input from BNF. They were 
professional in their approach, and, and I appreciate the input they provide. They actually helped us um, tweak and make some changes or address some things a little bit differently where we may not have gone deep enough so everyone can understand it. We kind of went a, a step deeper. So that worked out very, very well. I thought the process this year was extremely smooth. Uh, then we began our budget meetings with the board. Again, and I'm not saying because board members are here, but uh, of the four years that I've been working through this, uh, this was the smoothest from start to finish. Uh, the, and then here we are today with the budget presentation to the membership, whether it's live or on, on video or later someone's going to be able to pull it up and look at it uh, online. I, and then next week at the regular board meeting is when the board actually approves the budget. So what this allows us to do is, is the membership meeting is put the information out there, and then from there, this week, if anybody has any input, concerns, or questions from our membership as a whole, is to reach out to me, reach out to the board members, and, and give us any input you have. Uh, barring any of major changes or any input that we didn't see coming, uh, the budget will be finalized. <clears throat> okay, the board guidance. And again, what I did, I get it in paragraph form. I just pull out the salient points. Five-year funding plan continue. As you know, this is really the sixth year of it, but that's used for major projects and amenities. Realistic amenity budgeting. Staff positions add or delete as needed to meet uh, missions and, and objectives of where we're going, those type of things. Salary increases. Uh, uh, that was capped at 3% in aggregate. That's across the board with all. Uh, major projects, if we had any major projects, they need to be specifically analyzed and reasoned before we presented them. Uh, business plans or executive summary or business cases uh, for each of the major amenities, and then a, a real intense focus on the yacht. Key elements, five-year funding. Uh, we did stay with the five-year funding strategy. Uh, that's, where, that's the funding mechanism we have in place for our major capital projects. If you recall, that's approximately $1.1 million a year that goes into the reserve account to fund major capital projects. Summary business plans, we, we uh, put a business plan together, uh, a detailed one, more detailed than we had in the past on the Yacht Club, with the new club coming online. We thought it was real, real important a lot of focus on that. Uh, we did a detailed plan on the aquatics amenity. And the last one uh, was from Philly Casper Golf, and they provided their operations plan for the A couple of the key elements that we're focusing on in this year's uh, budget build was uh, drainage. Uh, it's, it's been a hot topic. Uh, we've actually included a, it was a four-person, now two-person crew specifically focused on drainage. That's going to be their primary duty. The reason we dropped from, from four to two is we've decided to go ahead and uh, buy the piece of equipment that was part of, it's, it's the blowout, um, uh, it, it's the trailer that you tow behind uh, a truck and it actually pumps air through where we can blow the pipes out. It's the same size unit that the county uses that we have to call them and wait for them with their truck to come out and do. We're actually gonna have the equipment to do it ourselves. We've actually rented this piece of equipment uh, in years past to do this this process when we were a little behind. So what the focus is now, we'll have the equipment, we're gonna have a two-man crew assigned to it. Doesn't alleviate us from pumping up to four later if we need to, but right now we feel this is the best strategy. It's a two-man crew with the, with the equipment and their primary focus every day is gonna be drainage. Golf, very excited about golf, bookings are up. Uh, when I say up, they're up from previous years. Uh, the spring is shaping up nicely. We actually had a week and a half, two weeks ago, we had our first book in 2015. So not only is this spring book, I'm not saying full, but we're getting bookings for this spring higher than we've had in years. We also already have some bookings for a year and so many months away from us. So that's pretty exciting, the words out there. We're starting to see something very, very different with our golf. Racket sports. Uh, if you recall, we've always had tennis, and that was a tab in the book. Uh, what we've done is we've expanded it to rackets. It's not just a tennis focus. Uh, we actually have tennis, platform, and pickleball. And we've divided those elements uh, in the budget book, all feeding up into the racket, uh, racket sports tab. Reasoning for that, all 
all three of those elements have different requirements, different needs, but they all are racket related. Dave Marshall and his group, as we renew the contract with them, they oversee tennis, platform, and pickle, and other parts of management areas where they're the management company. So when speaking to them about renewing the contract, they certainly said, yes, we can manage that for you and help coordinate the use of the courts and those type things. So that made it very, very nice for us. The other thing is the numbers, when you look at how we've taken the management contract and the amount that we paid for Dave Marshall, and we've allocated based on how much time that we believe he's going to use in each of the three elements. So it's easier for us to track and break down. So it's a lot of steps to get it set up, but now we feel real comfortable and we'll be able to track each of the activities. And I think it also helps highlight platform and pickle, where they're growing and trying to build their membership. Having specific line items will help them grow their membership as well. Yacht Club, extreme focus on the Yacht Club right now with the project coming online this year. Very, very excited about it. Key element now, we know we're going to have a state-of-the-art facility. We know the size is going to be good. We're very, very confident everything's going to be beautiful. So our focus in the last couple of months has been, as that building is coming to the final build steps, we're really focused on the staffing. Things that we've been doing, we're working on ways we're going to train the new staff when they come in. David's been working real close on that. Focusing on the team concept. And then, obviously, how much marketing, how we're going to market the project. We have, we've had a number of interviews. We had approximately 60 applicants for the chef's position. From all, we had them apply as far as California, Florida, and then everywhere in between. To, we've had one full interview. David and Paul Soufli, Paul was our chef. He lives here in the community. Works at Warwick Tech and their culinary arts. He ran the Worcester County culinary arts for the Worcester County public school system. Paul's instrumental in helping us interview the chefs as well. So he and Paul and David have been reviewing all the resume that came in, got to their top list, did phone interviews, narrowing that down, and we've started bringing some folks in to actually sit down and interview with them now. We're taking our time on it because the chef's position will be the next critical hire we have. Overall marketing, our budget, one of the other key elements is overall marketing of the organization. Obviously, when we spend this much money on two of our major amenities, that would be the Yacht Club and Golf, we have to back it up with a marketing effort. If we don't, we lose the opportunity to drive the business through the door. So one of the things that we looked at is increasing the awareness of all the offerings we have. We have to keep beating the drum that the Yacht Club and Golf are open to the public. They're not private entities. We still run into people today that say, oh, I didn't know I could come to the Yacht Club because I thought it was private. We need to overcome that this year. So we're really putting a lot of effort into that. In addition, we're improving our overall image of the community. Our new website's extremely helpful to that so far. We've had great feedback. We have over 5,000 people that have subscribed to our email list now. So that's a pretty good number for folks that are getting regular updates from us. And then the next step for us, the website's built on a platform that we're able to continue to expand it where we're hoping to do surveys and do where you're able to log on, surveys for questions we have that we'd like to reach out to more people. We'd like to be able to sell product. You know, if you want an Ocean Pines hat or a sweatshirt or T-shirt, you'll be able to go online and buy it, and we'll send it to you. We're hoping to all our offerings from Yacht Club to Country Club, Beach Club, all those kind of things, those updated all the time. So just a much more interactive experience. The other step we're trying to build in the website is you as a member are able to go online, log in into the secure area, and update your contact information, check on where your HOA dues are and those type of things. So that's what's coming up with the website. We now have the ability to move into that direction. Just some overview on budget components. I thought it was important to go back and make sure. We kind of go through it, but a lot of times if you don't do budgets all the time, you miss some of the different components. So I thought I'd just run through those real quick with everybody. 
three major components, operations, capital, and reserves. They all feed in. Once that's all tabulated, at the bottom line, that's how we come up with our assessment. Operations, I broke it down into two, side, two components. Operating departments, police, fire, EMS, public works, maintenance, CPI, admin, which includes my office, finance, membership, marketing, PR, and rec and parks. Then we have our amenities, golf, including F&B, Yacht Club, Aquatics, Racket Sports, Beach Club, Beach Club Parking, and Marinas. They're how we break down the elements uh, from the amenities to the operating. Biggest thing that you see between the differences between the two, the amenities actually have funding. They're driving. We're selling a product or service. Best way to understand it. We're, we're providing or, or a product, a service, something for you to pay to use. The operating side, typically that's not the case for the, for the top half of the slide. They're, we're users of it. Now, we do get some funding, example, for police and fire, but they're not, we're not getting that money via consumer product sales. Uh, capital, reserves, new capital expenditures, debt principal payments, they all go into the capital bucket. We also have a very, very small piece for deficit uh, reduction and uh, any accumulated deficits over the years, they go into that bucket of funds. We broke down assessment dollars. I'll click all these real quick. Um, here's how the amenities based on the budget have finalized now. Racket sports, $4, and, and without brackets is a plus. Uh, Marine is $12, beach club parking, 48 Golf is still a negative. Aquatics a negative. Beach club is, uh, is a plus. Yacht club is a zero. That was something that the board... Uh, Went, really went line by line we looked at the Yacht Club. What that means is we're budgeting to break even at the Yacht Club. Okay? So the bottom line amenities towards the bottom line assessment is $51. Operations, admin, public works, all these are bracketed again because they're not revenue <coughs> drivers. These actually uh, use up the money. Public Works, Fire Department, Police Department, Rank and Parks. You see the 573. And again, these are available on the slides. I know I'm going through them relatively quick, but they're in the handouts, and they're going to be online for us. This is how the how the how all the dollars kind of shape up. Uh, if you look, uh, replacement reserves, 1.6 million, almost 1.7 in total. Uh, now, that's, that's made up of a number of different accounts. Uh, bulkhead reserve account. 828,000, roads 230, deficit reduction 135, five year plan, that's the million dollars a year that we put in, and then uh, drainage 24,000. Just kind of how the numbers in this year's budget break out and where they go. And again, it's in the slides. I know I'm covering them quick, but they're in the actual slide. Okay. Operations, uh, what we did was, was wanted to show how the, the, all those numbers kind of put on the two quick slides for you. Uh, we had items increasing the assessment this year, public works, and that's where we have a crew assigned to it. It meant a $15 adjustment to the bus uh, budget. Additional marketing expenses were six. Now, I hit the highlights. There's some plus and minuses in the entire budget. We kind of hit some of the highlights here. Uh, additional net departments, all others, $9, which means a total of $30 impacted on this year's budget. Items that decreased the budget for this year, amenities, fire and EMS, when I say decrease from previous years, the cost to us for this year versus previous years is lower. Here's the impact. Police department, a total of 55 So the net decrease, combining the two, the 30 positive 55 on the other side gives us $25 difference. Remember the 25 because I'm going to carry it forward in that. Capital, increased depreciation expense is $6, increased uh, new capital expense of 13 increased sports per loan principal, and that's where we've made a change in how we're paying off that loan. Um, that totals $20. We bring the 25 from the previous slide forward, okay? Bracket that, so the difference between the additional cost 
and then the decreases, there's a $5 bottom line decrease in the assessment for the year. Hence, 914 was last year's, this year's going to be 909 is what's in the proposal. Board guidance, to, to recap, continue the five-year plan we did. Realistic amenity budgeting, we believe we've done that. I, I'm not going to lie, we have some pressure on that yacht club zeroed out. Uh, I'm not going to mix words on it. Board's aggressive, they want that zeroed out, so we're going to do everything we can, everything we can to, to meet that. Uh, we did add a couple of staff positions uh, to, uh, for the drainage. Uh, and the aggregate salaries were capped at three. Major projects were, were specifically analyzed and addressed in the budget. And then the uh, business plan summaries were provided. We had some positive comments about those this year, too, which I appreciate. Okay, what's next? We're here today with our public hearing to go over the budget, overview of the budget, answer any questions. Uh, regular board meeting, which will be next Saturday, same place, same time, uh, is when the board will actually do, during their regular board meeting, we'll take the final vote on the budget. Question? Kind of quick down and dirty. Yes, sir. I'm hitting the lights, so. That's okay. My name is Mike Daly. I live at 245 North Landing Road, and I have a couple of questions. Number one, I wanted to know, just from reading the paper, and Ocean City had that penalty non-completion on time. Do we have that for the yacht club? We do not. We do not. We do not. The reason why is that we wouldn't put a penalty on a non-completion on time? Was it negotiating the contract? I'm not even concerned about it. We're going to meet our time. How's that for confidence? That's great. That's great. <laughs> we have a wedding. We've got a couple weddings in May, and I'm no, not going to meet the bride and groom and parents. <laughs> I just was curious if, if when we will make projects like that, so mine's tried. Yeah, uh, we didn't this time. It's something that came up for future projects. We feel very, very comfortable. We went through a lot of uh, uh, a lot of deep looking at the different uh, contractors. We felt Harkins with the size, with their experience level, with years in, in, in our market, we felt very confident. They not only had the resources, but the ability to finish it as timely as they said they would. So all those went into that final decision. Okay. And the second question is, everyone's in favor of the uh, cutting assessment. But I'm trying to understand why you cut assessment $5 and yet raise the amenities on some of the amenities. Okay, there were a couple of amenities that we raised. Um, the slips, rain and slips went up a little bit. Again, failing behind that, we have a brand new facility. We just spent $4.7 million on the facility. We put bathrooms in. Uh, we, we've upgraded the facility. So without an increase in, in I think it's five years on that particular one. We felt it was reasonable with all the additional parts we were adding. It was reasonable to do so. Uh, golf. We increased golf slate, and that's just under a 5% increase. We felt after we made an investment of approximately $1.4 million in the last 18 months, it was a reasonable expectation to ask our golfers to pay a little bit more for, for the amenities. Um, Art, what were the others we had? <clears throat> you remember, Art, for the uh, increases? I, I, I'm sorry to understand. It's, I, I'm Beach sorry. Club parking. Again, Beach Club had not been increased in over five, or five years. I think that last was 2010. So what we did was we just looked at it because keep in mind, operationally, it still costs us our fuel costs go up every all, uh, Just like all our homes, we all incur additional costs that go up a little bit. And we're, when you're holding amenities at pricing for four or five years without increase, and then you're making capital investments into them in the two largest ones, we felt it was a reasonable time to ask for those increases. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, well I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning. My name is Slobodan and Trendig. I live on Plenty Road. Um, as some of you know, I'm relatively new, so I'm going to ask a question that, two questions that I would like to get better educated on, maybe the 
viewers that are tapping in remotely may have a similar interest. Um, as some of you know, I recently joined the Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee, so I decided to play the game by actually participating in it as opposed to being on the sidelines watching the actions. Um, that's my first question. Uh, you mentioned earlier that budget finance committee was meant this year in working with the OPA management and constructing a very, very good input and, and very good collaboration. I understand from uh, becoming now a member of the committee myself uh, that these committee meetings are open to the public. So I was wondering, since the Budget and Finance Committee is so successful this year in particular, whether they, um, they have the pleasure of uh, having a good attendance from members. Uh, and I imagine if that is the case, that's also the opportunity to get members in during committee's activities, which kind of makes today's get together, together even more productive and more seamless. So certainly if the committee is good in recruiting the audience and getting that kind of interaction, it makes it easier on them. And I'm hoping to kind of replicate that with our own committee and that has that kind of a public collaboration. So that's the first question. Okay, so if I make sure I understand, your question is how well attended are the BNF committee meetings? Right. Exactly. exactly. And, and has the committee benefited from public input during those sessions? Well, we have uh, the new committee chair here. I'm not sure I want to put her on the spot to answer <laughs> how, how productive it's been. But I can tell you it's typically less than a handful of people that attend in addition to the committee members. Do you agree with that? Exactly. Yes. I've been on the committee less than a year, but attendance is primarily present. Excellent. That's good to know that at least some of these come. Great. Okay, thank you for that answer. Second question I have is related to your reserve fund. So looking at your slide, um, I noticed that uh, the, uh, the reserve funding is around a million dollars. Okay. And when I look at the breakdown, I, I see a five-year plan has about a million. The rest of it, um, is it safe to interpret the rest of the funding as being maybe more for things that are uh, relatively annual activities or are some of them also a multi-year future expenditure? Good question. And I, and I do have a reason for asking that question, and I'll be happy to share that. Sure. Let me answer it, and if it if doesn't cover it all for you. Uh, we separate the five-year funding solution. It, it was a separate funding mechanism were introduced six years ago now, recognizing a shortfall for major capital. How are we going to fund major capital projects? Uh, obviously, when you look at major capital projects, you can. there are multiple ways. You can borrow money. You can uh, do a borrowing. You can do a special assessment, those type of things. Uh, the board recognized at the time there might be a better solution, and that's this five-year funding plan. I look at it in simplest terms as a savings account. We're taking amount of our assessment every year, putting it in a savings account that we're using for major capital projects, yacht club, golf, those type of things. The other piece of the pie are the other reserve accounts you're looking at, or all others combined, and the majority of those are reoccurring, or, or I say reoccurring. Uh, one of the things that uh, is in this year's budget that would fall in there if we were replacing reserve funding for equipment, for trucks, or any of the types of things that are capital items that, that get used up, life expectancy, all that falls into all that other piece. Great, thanks. Um, the reason I was asking that question is, in doing some of my own research, and I think we all benefit from the web these days, there's a tremendous amount of information out there. It just takes some extra time deciphering and figuring out what, what has substance, substance and what doesn't. But I found it interesting when reading about the HOA in general, uh, and how they they uh, they finance future capital expenditures. Quite often, they uh, before setting up reserve funds, I have learned that they actually do some whole reserve study, and that becomes sort of like a guiding document for reserve funding. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder. Uh, I guess my first question is: Does does PA have reserve study? And if they don't, 
are you actually supplementing that with something called a capital improvement plan, which kind of you know, su substantiates why you need five-year reserve to be the size of X? Gotcha. We have had reserve studies. The last company, OA, was the last time we had an outside company come to do a reserve study for us. Uh, we are in a couple of things. Uh, the, our HOA is unique size and maturity. When you look at smaller HOAs, reserve studies are quick. Uh, you can order a CD from any number of sources, plug in your numbers, print it out, kind of like a TurboTax. You have companies coming in. Um, so yes, we, we've had we, we've take, had a full study done. And your second part, yes, we are looking at our, 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 our capital projects using the long term, the kind of rack and stack, and now the CIP uh, as our guiding principle. What our needs are going to be in the future, and then that's how we're plugging in where we believe the capital requirements based on assessment, how we're going to save for it. So yes, on that answer as well. Great. Bob, thanks for answering the question. I'm going to leave you just with a comment related to the reserve, uh, reserve fund. Uh, and this is a comment as a member. Of the new <laughs> Looking back at how the reserves are funded, I understand there are usually three ways of doing that. Being financial background, you probably know what those are. The one that we are most familiar with is they're funded through the annual dues. Uh, obviously, special assessment, as you mentioned earlier. Um, and I was wondering if uh, the management and the committee itself has uh, looked at this from a perspective of, of for instance, current donors. Um, and what I mean to say by that, uh, you know, if you look at, at the OP, there might be 500 homes for sale at any given time. Um, so if I am um, a homeowner that's planning to leave, in the very near future, I'm actually paying for some of the improvements that are going to happen in the future, and paying for that front my HOA. Vis a vis, if you do a special assessment uh, on what become a future capital expenditure, say next year you do a special assessment to finance of each club. Just hypothetically, I'm not trying to create any controversy. But, uh, you know, if I sell my home and I'm gone, it doesn't affect me financially in any way. But those that remain and those that are coming as a new homeowners would be affected, would end up financing it. So, so my, my comment is, um, would it be worthwhile for, for the Project and Finance Committee and Management to look at the three most popular options of financing of reserve, reserves and what would be fair across the board? given the fact that we are a resort community and therefore the turnover rate might be higher than in a typical community. Mm -hmm. So that's just a comment from a newcomer. It might be totally no, no, no. Uh, it, inappropriate it, it, because, you know. It's not inappropriate, but I'll tell you this. It's been looked okay. we've talked about. I, and, and I'll certainly, you know, you can come in and we'll, we'll go in great detail if you like. The uh, overall, the way our strategy is set up, and you're going to get opposing opinions on it, but I, I can tell you definitively, I believe this to be true. You're coming in new. When you came in, let's let's say you came in January of this year. I'm going to kind of try to put simple terms just so it's, it clarifies. So you come here in January. You didn't bring a bucket of money and put it down to pay for any of the amenities that you just bought into. So you haven't paid for anything. While you're here, that, that, that other big slice where the depreciation, the funds are building up to buy the new trucks and new equipment, you're now paying one on a truck, one fifth for that year. Or the yacht club, the new yacht club, is going to be amortized over a 50 year depreciation. So you'll pay one for one, your little piece for the year you're here and then future years. So you haven't, when folks say it's, is it fair? We believe it is. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't look at other strategies. We're constantly looking, is there a better way to do it? Is there a way to improve? Do we borrow funds? Do a combination? Always open to that. But when it comes to when you think someone's just moved here and when they with, well, when you leave, we no longer charge you for the building. So you're really being charged while you're here, part of your assessment to cover things that you're using. Mike. It's a very good way to look at it. No, thanks very much. Like you said, there are different, there are different it's a great questions. Question. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, we 
Part of the reason I talk about it is a lot of people have asked that question, and it's a fair one. And we should keep looking. Budget finance is interesting. I mean, we look at those type of things. The board has talked about it then, uh, a couple of years ago. And again, you're going to have differing opinions on it. But we do believe this is a, a either way, you're going to have pros and cons. But this is a pretty fair way. To look. No, I think I think what you said is very true. I think the board now educated the information becomes an intelligence. Actually, I think the less we'll have issues or concern with how, with how some things are done. So thanks very much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you all for your uh, patient attention. No, it was good. Thanks for getting on the committee. <laughs> that's good. Well, I don't know if that's good or bad. No, well, it's good. Time will tell. Time will tell. <laughs> Mr. Clark. I'm just going to make a comment real quick. Absolutely. Because sometimes things get said and they, and they get chiseled into stone when they're not. There is no special assessment right. option in the Ocean Pine stock. Okay. One fee once a year. Period. So if we're going to fund a new beach club, we got to fund it in your dues. That's we can't true. say, oops, we need a new beach club tomorrow. We're going to have a special assessment. Our documents don't allow that source. Of Thank you. I just want to add one thing to the. Uh, it's Tom Terry. Tom Terry, Marty Clark. I just wanted to clarify one thing, Bob. You mentioned you rack and stack that's being assessed right now. It's when the level set. While it's being assessed and updated, it was in fact voted on by the Board of Directors in 2011. So there is in fact established ranking of the various facilities, how long they're going to last, when they're going to be repaired. So we're not working off of, a, of an empty file. There is in fact an established rack and stack that we're working off of. It's being updated now because it's a couple of years old. Uh, so that but I want to make sure people knew that it wasn't just, you know, we're still thinking about it. In fact, the board did vote on Iraq and Stat, which has been used generally as a background for the decision. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Carol Mills. I live on Gotham Beach Road. I think price part increase at Beach Club is outrageous. There are no plans to improve the parking lot, i.e. line it. You can go over there. You have to go early to get on it. And you, you know, you may not get on it today, but you, you're not guaranteed a spot. Why that? Okay, we, uh, again, we no increase for five or four and a half is fit. Well, they haven't done anything. No. Okay. No increase for five years. Okay. However, think of what's occurred in the last five years. We still have employee costs associated with the park. They haven't decreased over that five year period. We have costs to maintain it. I agree with you. We're not paving it. We're not, you know, lining it differently. But there are still costs to maintain what we have. They have not decreased. Yet we have not passed on any of the increased cost to, for operations to our membership for that amenity for five years. So we felt this was a reasonable time to pass that on to our. But according to one of the charts, a chart in one of the papers, the difference between revenue and the expenses is horrendous. We make money right. on that. Is that what you're referring to? We do make money on that. You've got a cash cow. <laughs> we have a cash cow. We're all vested. I know. <laughs> you being. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I understand. I don't know. I just think it's outrageous. And I don't know what Ford was thinking. I proposed it, so. They weren't thinking. Look at me. <laughs> You can bring your better half with you, Miss Mills. He's flipping pancakes at the end. Perfect. <laughs> and and probably act like no. <laughs> That's why I said it. I know you're pulled on you to sit down. <laughs> Anybody else? Been short and sweet today. Thank you all very much for being here. Right, if you have any questions afterwards, please grab me. All right. Thanks. Good.